After covering The Least of Us last month, Sam Quinn's most recent work on meth and fentanyl overdoses in the United States, I happened to grab another book on topical drug use during a different time and place. One thing that stood out to me is, in Quinn's book was the empathy for the characters and victims in the stories he presented, even if they're not always easy to empathize with. For example, should we not find empathy for a First World War veteran, an artist turned away from school, and a drug addict who ultimately committed suicide? Does that change what I say was Adolf Hitler? I say that because today I am covering Blitz, Drugs in the Third Reich by Norman Oller. It is a novel take on examining the rise of Hitler in the Third Reich from a pharmaceutical perspective. This 2017 international bestseller has also inspired several documentaries with such fun titles as Nazis on Drugs, Hitler, and the Blitzkrieg. The first half of the book covers drug use in German society after World War I, and later the use of pervitin, aka meth, by German soldiers and officers in World War II. The other half of the book covers the two characters of Adolf Hitler and his trusted doctor and supplier who has a very ironic name, Dr. Theodore Morrell. Now, I have not read a genuine history book in quite a while. I have been reading some about much other serious topics, and I want to read something relatively silly to cleanse the palate. Now, this stuff they don't teach you in history class, and I really wish they did. The Nazis are held up as the pinnacle of the evil state for good reason, but it's always approached too rationally. The human animal is anything but rational, far less so when we add drugs to the mix. This has far reach applications all across the chain of command, from the average soldier taking provision to avoid sleep, during a long march, to the Fuhrer himself. Now, we all know Hitler, we've probably seen videos of it, of doing his mildly impassioned speeches where he would yell, wave his arms around, and just be overall very dramatic. You don't get that performance without some kind of chemical help. Actually, a lot of chemical help. Maybe taking daily injections of random stimulants, vitamins, and chemicals is going to affect how a world leader handles domestic and foreign policy. Maybe that's... I think so. Now, keep in mind that Nazis were not the only ones using anything. Everyone was taking something. Uh, there's very there's one very well-known story on the Finnish soldier... I'm not going to get this name right, but... Imo Cuban who is in a bid to evade Soviet troops, took his entire company's supply of provision. And here's a hint, you should not take your entire company's supply of provision. And he barely survived the shenanigans in the course of his flight. He did, though. Now, I highly recommend you check out his Wikipedia page. It's a ride. Now, the author does fudge numbers and compete for a dramatic effect, but it's a really fun idea. My one quibble, and something that a lot of people on Goodreads point out as well, is that... He throws in a section near the end where he tries to cement Hero's moral agency in every evil he committed, especially near the end of his life when the Holocaust was ramping up. Now, this is after he clearly paints him as a non functional, bedridden junkie who could only be roused in the morning by a random injection of stimulants and chemicals. If we really want to understand the horrors perpetrated by men, fellow human beings, the same as you as me, from the Holocaust to the battles to tyranny, we should not underestimate the widespread and common use of meth does to say it seems like common sense other than that i highly recommend this book to any fan of history now if you'd like to check this out we have it in print cd audiobook and ebook and e-audio through libby for more information on libby and the rest of our digital collection go to founda.org digital that's all i did today take care everybody.